909-910. It's Brandon Fott and the Diamondbacks sitting at plus 152. Gavin Stone and the Dodgers at minus 172. Total of eight and a half with some juice to the over at minus 115. Corby, let's start with you here. What do you think? Is this just Dodgers or nothing? You just want to click the Dodgers. The way this team is hitting, the way Otani is hitting, and I don't know if you saw this article where they tried breaking down saying, are the Dodgers going to let Otani pitch if he keeps hitting this way? If they're, are they, Is he going to mm-hmm. be just more valuable as a hitter? And the answer is, how stupid can you be? They didn't pay him $700 million to be just a hitter, right? They paid for a starting pitcher and a hitter. He's obviously going to pitch, right? It's just ridiculous. Yeah. He had the lowest ERA in all of baseball last year until he got hurt. I'm pretty sure it's, it's something like he's yeah. top three for sure. One of the highest <laughs> yeah. strikeout. Rate. Yeah, I saw that and I was like, "Are you like, you just must not be listening to yourself." But uh, yeah, the Dodgers. Listen, uh, I a few things. First off, this uh, Dodgers team is pretty good. I don't know if anybody's aware of this, though they don't have the best pitcher on the mound today. I don't really worry because who isn't really good this year just has not impressed me at all with the bats. It's this Arizona Diamondbacks team. Like we see a, a yeah. team with. Basically, it's three guys over 280 or 270 expected batting average, which would lead towards some kind of, of hope towards this team. But when two of those three players are Jack Peterson and Jake McCarthy, like I'm not buying into it very much. Uh, Marte's looked good, but this Dodgers team is just a completely different beast. Is Gavin Stone good enough to get the swing and miss? Um, we've kind of talked about this, but I, I think probably his changeup looks decent, and I do understand where there's some hesitancy and why this line is so low. But I look at Brandon Fott, and I, I'm just not impressed at all by Brandon Fott. So uh, a spot where I would back the Dodgers' first five run line, plus 100, I think you're just getting an offense that has the capabilities of scoring four runs here. And, and I don't know, even versus an average pitcher at best, if the Diamondbacks can score four runs. So uh, do, do the Dodgers score four? Probably not. I think this is more of like a 3-2, 3-1 kind of game. Uh, and the Dodgers at, at even money to be up. Also, not, uh, not Dodgers-related, but I see somebody said, and, and I'm going to make one reference to the Forrest Gump debate. Listen, somebody <laughs> says Corby made, a, Corby made a Forrest Gump reference. You never know what you're going to get. I will say that is the only reference I ever hear from Forrest Gump. And if that in a comedy is your number one quote, it's not a good comedy. Like that is not oh, a, like life's box not, of chocolates. That's not that's the not funniest a funny part. quote. And so the it's part like, that, come on. the part that we, my friend just had a kid. Right. And so my favorite part is when Forrest walks into the apartment where Jenny's been hiding out. One of the worst people of all time, by the way, Jenny from Forrest Gump. She may as well be Rose right. from the Titanic or she may as well be Pam from the office. Just a real, you know, there's words for it here. And Forrest walks in and he goes, is he smart or, or, or is he dumb? And he, he sounds out the B. That's what starts making me laugh. The dumb uh, part. So uh, I don't know that for me, you got it. You got to dig deeper. It's not that these bubble gum references that everyone else says. And we got Ed Bless saying what other show talks about the Constitution, removing the Dakotas, the Electoral College and wind out at Wrigley. It's this one, baby. That's right. Get the fingers up. What does a base winner model say here on this one, B-Dub? And also, Jenny was the worst, right? Just what a little, I want to call her, I want to call her something, but I'm not going to channel my inner ditty here. Uh, What do you think? (laughs) What do you think, B-Dub, on this game? You know, I see a huge advantage with with Fott over Stone, and I, I... You know, I respect Corby's analysis. He's really good. So there's there's conflicting opinions in the market for sure. But if I'm looking at Gavin Stone, I'm looking at, at, at some some kind of negative stats. He's at 13.6 strikeout percentage. That's the fourth percentile. Uh, hits per plate appearances, too, is .288. That is on the high side. And I have him ranked, gosh, 141st out of 153 pitchers. And so, like, I use a little bit uh, longer time frame for that 150 plate appearances, strikeout percentage, 300 plate appearances, walk percentage. The numbers on my site use just this this year's uh, stats to date. And uh, uh, Fats pitched uh, 54 innings. And he's better in strikeout percentage. He's a lot better in walk percentage. His base winner ERA is 3.56. Compared with Stone, he's pitched 44 innings, and he's worse in strikeout percentage by about 27%. That's that's concerning. And then he's worse in walk percentage by 13% too. BBK 0.55, base winner ERA 0.5, or 5.11. What I did is I played first five Arizona. And I, I took the half run, plus plus a half run, minus 120. 
I also played the over, too. I think both of these offenses are capable. Of course, the Dodgers second uh, versus the respective <coughs> split here. Uh, but the, the Diamondbacks are in the top 15, so top half of baseball. And I'm not really impressed with the Diamondbacks bullpen. They've, they've really struggled. So that's why I wanted to play first five. I, I, and I played the over, too. So two plays and one uh, for me on the card. Not on the show, but I, I sent these out as plays. Uh, Arizona plus plus a half for the first five and then over eight and a half uh, for the full game, guys. Yeah, and to your point, if I look at the weighted OPS numbers here, the highest weighted OPS on this card is Gavin Stone against the Diamondbacks today at 998. That's a very high number. Fourth highest on the card. So the next highest is Carlos Carrasco, 910. Alec Marsh is at 878. And then Brandon Fott against his Dodgers at 868. So it does line up to be some runs, I would say, in terms of the pitching. And maybe some dog advantage for the Diamondbacks, but it's hard to trust Arizona to Corby's point. They just haven't been very good and haven't been able to hit. And Gavin Stone, look, his last three starts, 19 innings pitched. It's been pretty solid. Also, so I could if you, uh, go ahead. If you use a if you use a weighted OPS, like Gavin Stone's only had three plate appearances. So that's right. Two, right. It's, that's two that's versus two Jock and one versus, Yeah. Right. So he, he hasn't right. actually seen this team a lot. So I, I, I fully get it. Like I'm not saying Gavin Stone's a role beater, but uh, if you if you basically use a two year sample, you're going to see a guy who's increases velocity three miles an hour. You've seen his his uh, everything kind of increase year over year. So last year, I would be in the full debate that like you should never back Gavin Stone in this situation. But I do think he's gotten better, as you're saying in the last right. 19. Like he's looked decent, yeah. and um, yeah. that's kind of the argument here. And that does happen, you know. That we've seen guys like uh, Grayson Rodriguez is another example. Even though we've sort of calmed down a little bit, when these guys that sort of Ranger Suarez, probably the best example. I mean, someone we used to pick on and, and, and fade, and now he's probably the pitch, he's probably pitching better than anyone in baseball this year, right? I, I, don't, I don't know anyone in baseball pitching better this year than Ranger Suarez. For purposes of the show, we're taking the Dodgers, first five on the run line for Corby, and that's sitting at even money at plus 100. All right. 